Anemia is one of the hallmarks of sickle cell anemia, of course, and their hemoglobin levels usually run in the six to nine range, but usually on average around 7.5 to eight. Uh, and this is more or less their normal state. And so the patients wind up getting transfused uh, a lot of times, especially uh, by inexperienced providers simply because they're anemic. And this is not considered to be the standard practice, standard of care. However, there are a number of situations with this disorder where transfusion is clearly indicated. Transfusion does not stop the pain of acute pain crisis. In fact, it can make it worse. Uh, although if the patient is symptomatic from being extremely anemic, the transfusion may help them feel better because it raises their hemoglobin, but it's an important point to understand that the transfusions don't stop pain. But they can stop stroke, they can stop uh, sickling that's going on in the lung with the so-called acute chest syndrome, which can be fatal. This is a very rapidly progressive pulmonary failure due to sickling in the lung. 25% uh, of patients with sickle cell disease have major strokes at some time in their life. 10% of children do. Um, and this is a true medical emergency. And in this situation, uh, essentially, you need to remove the patient's sickle blood. And this is done by exchange transfusion. Replace it with normal blood um, as fast as possible to stop the progression uh, of the stroke damage. And again, this is a procedure that is not common. Uh, uh, is, uh, uh, there's a experience with it in large centers, although this experience is decreasing. Um, so transfusion plays a major role. And for severe recurring complications, we'll often put the patients on transfusion every three weeks with the intention of keeping their hemoglobin levels at a, norm, well, not normal, but around 10 to 11. And this turns off the production of the sickle hemoglobin and dramatically reduces all of the complications. It reduces pain crisis, it uh, reduces strokes and acute chest. And so chronic transfusion programs are used uh, uh, for patients with frequent uh, severe crises. Stroke is uh, one of the major complications that occurs in sickle cell. And it occurs in young children, two or three years of age, can have major strokes because of sickling. Based upon some studies that were done by Robert Adams starting in the mid-90s, uh, we understand that we can predict the likelihood of stroke in children by measuring the blood flow velocity in the cerebral arterial circulation using transcranial Doppler. And so it's now standard of care in all children with SS type sickle cell disease or S beta zero thalassemia, which is a similar variant of sickle cell, to obtain this measurement annually. And if the velocities are elevated, this predicts a 30% probability of stroke in the next three years. And by prophylactically putting the patients on transfusion, we can uh, basically prevent the strokes. And so this practice, which has been ongoing for quite some time now, has significantly reduced the incidence of major strokes in children. We really don't know how low that you need to drop the hemoglobin S concentration to prevent stroke, however. And so in patients that have had a major stroke, the standard of care is to put them on chronic transfusions every three weeks to keep their hemoglobin S concentration low if you don't do that, there's about a 50 to 70 percent chance that they'll have another stroke within a year, and these can be fatal. So this is, again, transfusions in this setting are, um, are the standard of care in children. In the adult world, there is really not good data on this. In the adult world, many times transfusions are stopped or not started chronically, uh, but there's not solid data to support this practice in the in, uh, in people that are over, uh, sickle cell patients that are over 20. So transfusion does, uh, you know, does play um, uh, a major role.